Hey guys, welcome back to another bench update. It's been two or three weeks since my last one. I've not done much modeling, to be honest with you. I've done, well, I bought one kit, but mainly because of this guy or girl. Say hi. So as you know, my, um, my cat passed away a couple of months ago and the house is a little bit empty. So we decided to get this puppy. So she's been keeping me really busy at night and stuff and in the evenings. Well, I'm normally building models in the evenings. I'm now taking her out for, to go pee and stuff. So she's, um, 10 weeks old, so we had her two weeks, so we got her eight weeks old. She's a cockapoo, which is half cocker spaniel, half poodle. So she's gonna grow decent size, about 25 pounds, so not super tiny or big. Uh, but I mean, hey, hello. She's super cute and great with the kids, so yeah. So that's the reason why I'm not being um, building too much. It keeps very busy, like another baby in the household. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I've been working one kit, quite a big kit, a 30 second scale kit. So let me um, put this one down and then switch the camera so you show you guys what, what I've been up to. Say bye Charlotte. <laughs> Okay, so here's this little lady right here, which is obviously, to me, it's F16 CJ and 30 second scale. You know, it's a great kit, uh, but I'm gonna be a little bit controversial, a little bit hypercritical here of three things which really kind of bug me a little bit with this kit. Firstly, I know they do this, all, they tell me to do this all their 30 second scale kits, but the screws, like there's a lot of screws kind of screwed like the fuselage together and stuff. It may be a little gimmicky. Um, I don't think the screws are needed. I wish, you know, like trumpeter just, Plastic is fine for me. I don't need all the little screws. It sometimes affects some of the um, kind of the placement and the, and the uh, fit and that kind of stuff. So that's my first little gripe. Um, second one kind of leads to the same thing. Is all these little screws and pins, like see pins on the side here and stuff, which are fair enough. You can you know you can attach stuff and all that kind of stuff, but they're all thrown in the same bag. There's like one little bag in the kit full of all these different screws and pins and stuff, and it's just really hard to find which one you need. Um, we're talking about millimeter differences. So it's like one that's like seven millimeters long. There's one like six millimeters long. There's one like 5.5 millimeters long. It's like, how do you know which screws which? I mean, I, when you're paying $100 for a kit, I just you know, would like to see them in different bags like, or segregated or some way to know which, which screw, which pins which. Um, fair enough, the instructions have like a, a you know, like a, an extra instructions to scale. They're the real size of the screw. We can kind of place it on it. But again, when you're talking about six versus seven millimeters, it's, it's really, really difficult. Um, so that's my second kind of, um, kind of little rant. And the third thing is the, the cockpit. Again, you're paying all this money for this kit. Great detail. They even have chocks. They have uh, static discharges and all this stuff in the kit, but they don't supply you with decals for the instruments. So, I mean, you have three or four instruments in there, which is pretty prominent in this jet, artificial horizons and stuff, and it's just blank. There's nothing for it. And you think, you know, they go to this all this time and effort making this kit, you think they'd put a couple of decals in, you know, to do that. In the end, I went ahead and got air scale decals, which is basically a bunch of instrument panels. Gee, my drawer right here, if I lean across. Um, Right, these guys, you basically just get a bunch of instruments, so I, I use these, and well, I kind of line them, I have 30 second scale and 48 scale, and I found a lot of these actual dials on, on this jet, are actually 48 scale kind of fit better into the kind of instrument bezel, so I, you can see where I cut them out, what, which ones I used. So, I did this, which is not a problem, it solved the issue, but again, if you're paying 100 up, well, I think sometimes this kit goes for what, 150 bucks, if maybe more, you think you get you know a couple of little decals for the instruments. Um, so that's my rants out of the way. Um, it's not all doom and gloom. You know, it's a, it's a fantastic kit. People say it's the best modern 30 second scale fighter out there. Mm, I've not built too many. Uh, I put it on a par with a trumpet at MiG-29. I really, really enjoyed building that one. And this is probably on, on pretty much level with this one. This does have a few nice little things, you know, like posable. You can, you can move the rudder, the flaps, stuff. Um, you have the gun bay, which I've not done yet exposed and a few other little things you have the radar and that kind of stuff so you know it builds up to a really nice aircraft it's not super huge like with the mig-29 you know, it's a pretty compact aircraft so you know even on um 30 second scale you know it fits nicely in that cutting mat my cutting mat is in a oh, i forget is it an a2 or an a3 it's a 45 by 30 centimeters whatever that is um so it fits nice on the cutting mat so i think size wise you know it's good it's really heavy you get nose weight included really big nose weight 
um, and the engine comes out and all that kind of stuff. So it's a great kit. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm enjoy building it, but I'm not actually loving it like some of the other kits I built this year. You know, it's a little bit of a chore. I think just you know I've got a lot going on right now. You know, the dark and everything, and you know, work and that kind of thing, and and also I think filming and doing some video builds. This is a nine part video build. So I think having to film it kind of breaking the mojo up a little bit too. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to put this aside for a couple of weeks and. Um, Get working on maybe a smaller kit like a 70 second scale kit and get together pretty quick and build you know in a week or two um, to get the mojo back going and then come back to this because i don't want to rush through it and you know and just get it, knock it out i you know, I'll take my time and you know just enjoy the build so like I say, i'm going to probably shelve this for a couple of weeks and come back to it um but a lot of work's done you know, the whole main assembly's done um obviously the cockpit top's done it just really needs you know a few little detail parts like the gun and the radar and stuff and then ready for prime and paint um, but that is pretty much it. So I feel like I'm about to sneeze. So probably a good time for me to switch the camera back and let's talk about some of the purchases which I've got re in the last couple of weeks. So there you are. So that's the what I've been working on. So I, I think I'm wrong. It's a nice kit, beautiful kit, but I'm just not quite feeling it right now. So best thing in these situations is just kind of put it to the side for a couple of weeks and then I'll come back to it. I'll probably knock out a quick semi-second scale kit, like I said or a simple 48 scale kit just to get my mojo going back again in my building. Um, some of you get these 30 second, second scale kits are quite a lot of work and they kind of sap you a little bit, especially if you're filming and that kind of stuff, it takes enjoyment away a little bit. Um, before I talk about what I've been buying, I, I, if you see any recent videos, my reviews coming out, you'll see notice in the back back there, my, my models have shifted around a little bit, I had a little bit of sort out. So I did have armor in the middle and then my aircraft left and some cars and bikes on the right. Um, Aircraft are now left and middle, and armors moved to the right, and the cars and bikes have disappeared. So, somewhat copying Paul, Paul Bretland, um, I got rid of my bikes. Well, get Purse is getting rid of my bikes. Um, I'm not going to build them. I'm, I, the great engineer kits. I'm not really a great bike lover. I don't ride bikes. I don't watch motorbikes. Um, so displaying them and stuff. Um, so I, I'm, I'm never going to build them. And as you mentioned, as you probably saw in my last build video. I started that Golf GTI, and true to form, the paint didn't come out quite, I didn't get a perfect finish I wanted in the paintwork, so I kind of shelved that. I came to the realization that, you know, this is a few times now, I'm just not enjoying the cars and bikes. I like the aircraft and the odd piece of armor, but I have all these cars and bikes in my stash, and I'm, I'm not feeling it, I'm, I'm not that skilled, I'm not that in, you know great at building it. I know it would get better with practice, but there's so many kits now, cars I just kind of, put shelf because of you know I'm expecting perfection and it's really hard to get that perfection in modeling uh, with planes and tanks you can disguise it with weathering and that kind of stuff with, with you know BMWs and Mercedes and stuff you can't really cake them in mud um, unless it's a rally car I guess so took decision so I got rid of a um, few through um, the forum and um, on eBay and basically all my cars and bikes I kept a couple back um, look at Super Impreza my Lance Evo 10 I kept because of that hobby design resin full resin engine detail which is sold out and possible to find so I kept a Calsonic what was that a Calsonic GTR 2 so they're basically the only three color car kits that have the rest were on eBay um, on all the bikes and stuff which I think was a good I'm happy they're gone so I said I'd go to a good home somebody else build them um, at the same time I did purge my armor stash a little bit um, some of the armor stuff I'm not going to build I'm not really big into like Nazi German stuff um, I have quite a few in my stash. I don't mind kind of the main things like the like the Tiger Tank and that kind of stuff because they're very iconic, but I just don't build a lot of World War II stuff. That's not really my thing. Um, now and again, I might get a little peak interest and I have a few kits in my stash for that, but you know, I'm not really big in displaying like Nazi stuff. And it's just, I don't know, it's just, I'm not really into I'm more, I'm more like modern. If I do armor, I like to do modern stuff like your Challengers and your um, Abrams and that kind of stuff. And don't get me wrong, I'd love to do a 16 scale Abrams for interior if that ever came out. Um, but so things like what did I get rid of? I got rid of my main Panther. I got rid of my Sturm Tiger from Rifle Models with Fall Interior. Great kit, but I'm never going to build that. Um, few, so it created quite a lot of space there. So I, got, I kind of got rid of that, and then with the money, I bought a few more 70 second scale kits, which I'll show you in a minute. So I purchased a lot of it at that. So I'm looking right here, probably down to about one, probably down to about 10 armor kits to be honest with you. Um, I was probably at 50 at one point. So it really kind of went down. I've, I've kept really the core things, the modern stuff, which I like. And um, I did keep the Ryfield Tiger with full interior because that's kind of really nice kit with um, 
which one day would be nice to build. Um, but yeah, I just really kind of downsized it and just figured out, hey, I, I, every six, well, every nine to 12 months I do this, I go through my stash and then you know, my moves change through time. Sometimes I regret it, sometimes I don't, but it just frees up cash to spend other parts of the hobby. So in terms of that, um, what I have what I've been pre-order, I pre-ordered quite a few things. So I have the bought and paid for the Jet Mads 36 scale vegan, the resin kit. It looks absolutely beautiful, due out in March. I'll obviously do a full review and um, build and stuff on my channel whenever that shows up from Turkey. Um, another big kit I've bought, is, well pre-ordered is the, as you know I love my tornadoes, so I've got the Italeri 30 second scale GR4 tornado on pre-order from Hanitz, which should be out in about November, December time. Uh, I've got the Sevesda 76, 7, oop, stuttering, Sevesda 70 second scale Herc C130, I think it's an H, I got that on pre-order. Um, also got the, trying to get hold of the F14 Great War Hobbies, 70 second scale, that limited edition, the yellow box looks beautiful, it's a Sunset Cruise edition, I think it's Tom Catters. Um, that goes for a crazy amount of money, I'm not paying $60, $70 for a um, semi second scale kit, but no, if I, I've seen Hannon's have them on pre-order, and with the um, saving, with 20% sales tax savings and the 10% pre-order discount, it actually comes to a reasonable price, so if it works out good, I might get that one too. So that's really kind of all I got planned for the rest of 2020. Um, kind of dialed it back a little bit, less and less anything else comes up that we don't know about. Um, just really because well, a few things, but and also I actually got lucky in last weekend. Well, not last weekend, last week I pre-ordered um, and got pre-ordered PlayStation 5. So that's obviously a big chunk of money coming out of my hobby budget. So just need to dial it back a little bit. So. Not a huge gamer, but back in the day, I've had a PlayStation 1 back in, what, 90s was it, maybe? Um, two, three, four, so I figured I might as well get a five um, and complete the set of what I've had in my lifetime. So I got lucky. It was a bit of a fiasco trying to get a pre-order, but you know, kept trying and luckily went on Walmart randomly and managed to get one. So hopefully fulfill it. Um, for me, I'm, I can't wait for Gran Turismo 7. That's um, a, a game I played on PlayStation 3 for hundreds of hours. Even the 24 hour endurance races, I believe I did at some point. Um, believe it. <sighs> craziness. So, I'm literally looking for Grass Rooms 07 coming out at some point, probably 2021. Um, and the kids, I'm sure, enjoy playing it too. So, got a PlayStation 5. Um, that, yeah, that doesn't come cheap. So, um, other than that, that's kind of really it for my kits. So, here's, let's talk about what I actually got in the last few weeks. So, start with the little guys first. So, I got myself a mask set for the O2A. The Sky Master, the little Cessna. The, now the instructions have like markings in the. There's like a template in instructions where you can cut it out on tape and do it yourself. But I'm not very good at that, and it's a little bit of a pain. So for me, this is a lot easier getting the um, the mask set. It's just die cut, just stick them on. It saves me a ton of time and effort. So it's money well spent. Every time I order from Sprue Brothers, I see to pick up one of these coastal kit spaces. This is a Kalihar Airbase version. As you can see with my recent models, I'm looking over there. I really like to put those trumpet display cases with one of these on the back. It just really sets it off nicely. You know, my KC-135, my Buccaneer, my Tornado GR4. I've got a um, the F-14D, 72nd scale. Um, Great War Hobbies kit. All those kits look really good. I, I really like just the way they stack up two of those boxes. So yeah, just one of these bases. They're not very expensive. And they get different ones, just kind of set them off. That's, again, that's the Kandahar Air Force Base version. They do them different scales, I just reduce the 70 second scale kits. Okay, now going through the kits. So I, I've seen this one for a while, it's, this is a really cheap kit. It's the Delphin, which is the AMK kit. 70 second scale. Um, just really like the markings, yellow, the tiger markings, and we've got some really not cool market, other markings in there too, if you can kind of see that in the glare of the camera. But this is a really cheap kit. It goes, I think I paid less than $20 for it. And you get photo etch cockpit, get photo etch um, wings, you get a canopy mask, really nice decals. But you don't have much plastic. So here's the big box. And then tucked in the corner, you get this tiny little bit of plastic. So I thought it was a lot bigger than that, to be honest with you, but that's all you get. So you get all the goodies and stuff. Mask, what photo etch comes included. Again, for a nice price of $20. Really big instruction book too, because there's tons of stencils and markings and stuff. So I thought that's something a little different. So I picked that one up. Also picked this kit up, which is the 
semi-second scale Rebel Tornado Tiger Meat 2018. Now, I've had a little bit of a hankering recently to do something in Tiger Meat markings. I've never done it before. And I saw this one, I actually the next kit I bought, I actually bought, I'll talk about it in a minute. I wanted to just pad up to get ship, get, make it worth it for the shipping, so I added these couple of kits to it. So this one again was under $20 for the kit. Um, we, I built tons of these Revell semi second scale tornado kits, actually pretty good. Better, go together better than a 48 scale one, for sure. Um, so this is obviously the Luftwaffe version with the Tiger Meat markings. And I looked inside, I've done, done a review of this for a few weeks, but the those Tiger, those decals might be calligraphed, but they're beautiful. They're really nice, vibrant colors. Um, and you know I love my tornadoes, so for me it's a real brain in my source. I didn't know it came. I never noticed this kit before, so I saw it. Like I say, it was under twenty dollars, and I thought, well, with beautiful markings, why not? So I never built a, ton a German tornado before. It's always been the RAF. So I do have an Italian version in my kit stash too. Um, actually, Italian target meetings F3, so that go well with this one, I guess, as a pet. But there's that one. And last but not least. After procrastinating for a year, I finally got this guy, the Great War Hobbies F14A Tomcat in semi-second scale. Now, as you guys know, follow the channel, I built the D. This is probably the best semi-second scale kit I've ever built or is out there. The Tomcat, it's a beautiful kit. It's really nice, full of plastic, full of parts, full of really nice the detailed parts. But the price, it's... $70, I mean for a 72nd scale kit, that's ridiculous. Um, especially as the F15 is the same size box, the same amount of plastic pretty much, and that's $40. So you think the production costs are the same, but for some reason they, this is double the price almost. Uh, I'm not sure it's because it's an F14 or, or what the deal is, but really, really expensive. So what I do is I watch for the deals and every day I'll check deals of the day on Brew Brothers. And lo and behold, this comes up every two or three months. This one came up last weekend and it was $38. So for $38, that's the same as I paid for my D. Um, for under 40, I think this is a steal. It's a great kit. So I picked this up and added those couple of kits too to kind of make my shipping up. But this comes in, a, my, again, as you guys know, if you follow my channel, my favorite markings, the VF1 Wolfpack. Oh, again, you can see the brightness, but the Wolfpack, and it comes in with, actually really nice too, is the Black Aces. So, I mean, I'd love to do both of these schemes, to be honest with you. Uh, again, I'm not sure how well you can see the glare because it's so bright out right now. Um, I was kind of put off buying this because I know when it first came out, there's people on Brick Modeler posted about how the decals are kind of incorrect, like backwards and stuff. I checked the sheet and it seemed pretty good. Um, the main markings with the wolf kind of on the tail. I think when the very first one came out, so I think they were like back, like they weren't, they were reversed, they were incorrect, but they look fine to me. So um, everything looks good. You get a couple of different tail options. Um, looks like you get a few instrument, different instrument panels, so I'm not sure if it's a D or the B version they included as well. But as you know, I built this kit, it goes together really well. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. If you want to cut the wings extended with slap, flaps and slats and all that kind of business. But yeah, I can't, cannot speak highly enough about this. Oh, up, upside down. Um, but it's, yeah, I already done a review of this and this will actually be on Tuesday. So Tuesday's review this week will be this F14A. Um, I've done my D back in the day, you know, what start of the year, but now I've got the newer camera, you can see the plastic a little bit better, I think. Um, again, yeah, a lot of, full of, this thing's chock full of plastic. Just jam packed, and um, yeah, really beautiful kit. And that is it. So, what else to talk about? So, as you probably saw my latest build, video on a Friday is the Growler, the EA18G and those Centennial blue markings. It's, I think it's four or five parts long. Um, that's coming up every Friday. First part just went up. It, that, just give you a spoiler alert, it, it goes together okay. It's actually a snap fit kit, which I didn't realize until about the second or third part of the video. Um, so that kind of took it away a little bit, but it went together really well. So it's great for kids. It's basically a snap fit kit. Um, and to get those blue colors, I have to use enamel paints and I'm not, a fan on enamel paints, they take forever to dry. Um, so that really kind of spoiled a little, little, bit, little bit, spoiled it a little bit for me. So the paint is it's okay. It turned out okay in the end. Um, not my best job, but the, the paint is really difficult because normally when you're using like lacquer paints, when you t touch up, you just mask it a couple hours later, spray it, you're good. With enamel paints, you have to leave it a week. So 
I had a little bit of bleed, so then I had to wait a week, mask it, paint it, wait another week, and then it just took forever. It just really was a nightmare using those enamel paints. But again, those special Centennial blue colors, Tester's enamels, the only, those little pots were the only ones I could find. So, I mean, it was what it is. It is what it, it, it is what it is. That's what I'm, I guess I'm saying. Um, on the heels of that one, you've seen my KC-135. That's going to be, um, that's already filmed and up uploaded on YouTube, ready to go, scheduled. So as soon as the uh, EA-18G finishes, the tanker will go up, the KC-135. That's just a short, like, three parts, I think, because there's not too much of that one, to be honest with you. It's all about the weathering and the painting. And then on the heels of that, it will be the F-16, and that'll take us through the rest of the year, pretty much. Um, so the usual schedule, Tuesdays, I'll pull, pull, stick up a review, and on Fridays, you get your video build series and then my build vlogs every two to three weeks kind of sprinkled in between uh, depending what's going on um, so that is pretty much it so enough talking it's early in the morning on a Saturday it's beautiful weather outside so I think the kids are ready to go out so I think I'll wrap this video up and thanks for watching as always please subscribe like really appreciate all the comments and I'll see you next time so thank you and bye bye